Good morning, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Finding Your Voice. This is going to be a good time, so go ahead and get out all of your art supplies and get you ready. Before we begin in earnest, just a little bit of business here. It's um, uh, the, uh, the gap between this episode and the previous episode is pretty wide. Uh, a lot of stuff has been happening over here in <clears throat> happening over here in Gabistan. Uh, I uh, recently sought outside employment and uh, uh, got a job, went okay. Uh, another employer approached me, got another job, uh, and it's brand new and that's still happening. And um, art-wise, between those two things, uh, my own personal comic project has been... Uh, moving at uh, various speeds and uh, uh, the, the most momentous thing that's happened recently is I was uh, invited to speak uh, at a university at a, they, they arranged a small comic symposium at a university in South Carolina and it was absolutely lovely and uh, in addition to being able to speak at a university and being able to put that on my resume I got to spend a good long car trip with uh, the artist Max Miller Dowdle, uh, artagem.com. Fantastic artist, lovely guy, uh, somebody I, I can learn a whole lot from. And I was also able to spend some time with some artist friends that I haven't, uh, uh, I've, I've seen previously but never really got the chance to, to get to know, and I got to get to know some people. And I learned a lot, and it's all information that I want to share with you, and I'm going to share with you. However, this episode, I was looking at what I'm drawing here, and if you're paying attention, you're seeing it too. I kind of want to talk about what what's happening in this drawing more so than what else is going on art-wise. So we're going to start there, and uh, and then we'll go back into the other things that I've learned in later episodes. Uh, this morning's coffee is the Kenya blend from the Oak City Coffee Roasters. It is a darker blend, but uh, really, really shines when you put it through a French press and throw on some of that vanilla creamer. It's delicious. Um, if you'll notice, uh, every other episode I've said good evening and this one's good morning. Well, I, uh, on account of being employed and having to be awake during the day, I think it might be, uh, for various reasons, it's at this exact moment it's easier for me to wake up wicked early in the morning than it is for me to stay up wicked late at night during the long dark night of the soul so good morning i hope yours is going well hope you can start your day with at least a little bit of art all right let's talk about this drawing what you've got there is not a praying mantis you could be very much excused for thinking that it is you could be excused for thinking it is, because like a praying mantis, it has a very extended thoracic, thoracic portion. It has an elongated abdomen, and from its abdomen, we've got four of its six limbs. And uh, praying mantises are cool because, uh, like all insects, it's got six limbs. And most insects, they're all legs. However, on the mantis, two of the legs, quote-unquote, are actually the arms. A uh, mantis is an ambush predator, and it uh, grabs prey with its... Uh, with with the arm-like protrusions that are on top there. They're very jagged, very good for catching things, things that are usually very fast, things like grasshoppers. However, this is not a mantis. Uh, this is um, a holdover from uh, last year's Inktober, uh, and this was an exercise that I particularly enjoyed. What you don't see is uh, the portion where I was struggling with this drawing, trying to figure out where it was going to be, what it was going to be. And uh, it's it's the exercise which I encourage everyone to try because it's what happens in all of your drawings anyway. Um, the exercise is uh, you throw your marks down on a page. You don't need to know where they're going yet. You just put your marks down on the page and then you exercise the part of your brain where you look at the marks that you made and you look at them as though you're looking at a cloud and you see shapes in it. And then you set about freeing the shape from from the jumble of lines you have and the ether of the white page. And this all sounds very, very hippie and dopey and artsy, and I apologize because I don't enjoy sounding that way usually, but it's absolutely true. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say Michelangelo, uh, who sculpted the, uh, the, the very, 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 very famous sculptor of David. If I'm not mistaken, Michelangelo said... Uh, 
I do not sculpt so much as I free the object from the block of marble, say. Alright, so a lot of things are happening in this drawing. Item number one, uh, I'm going to skip and I'm going to talk about finding your voice. Finding your voice, a huge, huge part of who you are in art, is deciding what your subject matter is. What is it that you want to draw? What speaks to your personality, your specific personality? Because when you do this, uh, you, you find for lack of a better word, the thing that you're good at, or more specifically, the thing that you do that nobody else does. Uh, I've been listening to uh, uh, a lot of entrepreneurial self-help and podcasts and that sort of thing um, for for work, and uh, I'm learning a lot very quickly. I, I listened to a lot of op- entrepreneurial things when I was first beginning in comics, and I was uh, beginning a web comic, and it was a lot of information that uh, I either didn't have the maturity to to um, to internalize, or uh, a lot of information that was just uh, above my pay grade. It was further ahead than I wanted to be. Excuse me, not wanted to be, but further ahead than I was, and uh, and all of the information was lost. But um, uh, the information that I'm getting right now is like, oh, you want to be rich? Here's what you do. You find the thing that you're good at, and then you focus on that thing. And if you're not good at anything perfect, you're a blank slate. You can pick the thing that you're good at, and you can cultivate yourself and become good at that thing. Um, there's, I mean, this is strange and problematic advice because there are things that some of us are more predilected to be better towards than not, for instance. Uh, no matter what I do, I will always be bad at math. And... Uh, one of the ways to go through this is to take a good look at your personality, because personality is a form of ability. Are you good around people? Or are you bad around people? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Take a, a very uh, unafraid and unashamed moral and and uh, ab- abilitative. I, I can't think of a proper word. Take a good look at your your personality, your moral inventory, and your skills inventory, and just just think personality. Uh, am I funny? Do I want to be funny? Do I like to be funny? Um, all that jazz. A- am I kind of snarky? Uh, what What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And you focus on your strengths, and by focusing on your strengths, you create value, and the more value you create, the richer you can become, and end of entrepreneurial seminar. All right, so let's relate that to art, because this is super duper important, and it's, it's very, very much in the same vein. When you're looking at your art, finding your voice, the whole point of this podcast is looking at yourself. What do you think? What do you know? And what are you good at? And what kind of messages do you convey? Now, in in storytelling and in visual arts, uh, you convey very complex information, very complex uh, emotional and intellectual lessons. Not lessons, excuse me. Emotional and... um, intellectual ideas. You communicate these complex ideas with very incomplex artwork and images. For instance, a line drawing of something that is not a praying mantis and something that is kind of like a butterfly. Uh, and here's here's the voice that's that's happening here. This is the thing that I do. This was, uh, after this drawing, it was kind of a kind of self-discovery, kind of a reaffirmation. I ended up drawing this praying mantis-like thing. I, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a mantis-like alien. Um, I drew this thing, but because of the lines that I throw down, I drew this thing recoiling from something. And because of the face, I felt like drawing. It was recoiling in strange fascination slash disgust. So what would make this very intimidating? And like, if you'll notice, praying mantises are uh, predators, and everything about them says predator. They have sharp angles. Their uh, heads are are very sharp triangles. Their their mouths are complex set of mandibles. Uh, they have the compound. They have what I want to say five eyes, two large compound eyes, three smaller eyes, uh, and they've got all those sharp points on the on their on their forelegs or their their paws or their their grabber arms. Uh, so everything about them says dangerous. Everything about them says apex predator. They, they, they are, uh, like, in addition to being exceptionally fast ambush predators, in addition to being fairly intelligent for, for an insect, uh, they can also fly. So think about that, right? They're, they're dangerous. So I've got this creature that uh, it's got many sections in its thorax, and these sections all come to points. 
and the joints in its legs and its toes come into points and it's got all the points on its forearms and it's got uh, it's it's got uh, those those pincer mandibles with an extra point added in the middle so it's pointy it's prickly it's dangerous and what in the world would make this dangerous intimidating mantis like alien recoil in strange disgust and fascination uh, and in my head I would think it's recoiling from something innocuous no not innocuous it's recoiling from something that's sweet something that's less than innocuous or more than innocuous something that's that's actively affectionate uh, it is recoiling from its opposite. It is afraid of something that is completely and totally harmless. Uh, and in fact, um, something that you and I humans would find very, very endearing. So what is the most harmless? Uh, let's keep the bug thing going. What's the most harmless bug I can think of? Butterflies. My daughter is recently reached this phase where she's scared to death of bugs. Just scream bloody murder scared to death of bugs and her mother and I very very eager for this particular little phase to go away but uh, butterflies she's not even she's butterflies she's not scared of so boom butterfly butterflies innocuous okay now uh, how do we make this butterfly something worth recoiling from let's make this butterfly all dopey and in love uh, and I thought just boom that's perfect and this is this is going back to finding your voice because this is where I go. Uh, a buddy of mine said, hey, I want you to draw a robot. And uh, I, I did, but then I drew makeup on this robot. Like it was slapped on face paint with a trowel. And then standing next to this robot is a little girl who's so proud of herself and she's holding uh, uh, some lipstick. And it's just, that's a very me thing to do. It's, it's a big, strong robot made um, silly by something that's innocuous and, and equally silly. Uh, just something kind of funny and unexpected. Uh, and uh, I'll, if, if I'm being real, maybe a little bit saccharine, you know, maybe, maybe just a little sweet that you're just kind of like, oh, I'm getting diabetes. Um, and if I'm being honest with myself, that's the kind of guy that I am. That's the kind of thing that I do. And if I want to be um, a success, successful as an artist, successful as somebody who, who wants to communicate my specific voice and my specific idiom, then that's I need to know this stuff about myself. And then I need to work on being able to cultivate it. Or so goes the theory right now. So that's what we've got in front of me. And that's why uh, Inktober is such a great, great little month slash event thing for uh, learning things about yourself art wise you just sit down and you just draw I don't know what to draw fine make marks on the paper and then see where those marks take you and where those mark take you uh, will, will serve as kind of a meditation on the places that you um, innately want to go and there the trick is not to fight this because uh, you'll draw something and be like, oh, this is crap and I don't like it and I don't want to draw this thing. Well, then why did you draw it? Why did you see it? You made a bunch of marks on the paper and then those marks became your own personal Rorschach test that you get to participate in. And in the test that you participated in, you made this thing. Are you sure you don't like it? Think hard. Um, take a very honest, unashamed, unabashed, uh, for lack of a better word, moral inventory on the thing that you made. I'm pretty sure you like it, otherwise you wouldn't have spent that time on it. Or maybe you liked it at that moment, or, or whatnot. Just just pay attention to the thing that comes out of your pencil when you're just kind of meditating on drawing and on the things that you personally enjoy. And for some people, this particular journey is very, very easy because somebody say, oh, I freaking love giant, drawing giant robots. I'm going to go out of my way to draw those. I love drawing monsters, like Muppet-style monsters, because who doesn't? You know, so uh, for a lot of people, uh, this is not a very zen thing. This is a very obvious thing that's sitting right in front of their conscious mind. Uh, whereas other people, it's, it's still, especially uh, novice artists, this is still a very unconscious thing, and you're only going to find it by drawing. Alright, so that's item number one. Item number two, let's talk about um, 
well, let's talk about the other part of this craft, the other part of this meditation, if you will, because that's how I how I look at the Inktober drawings are on meditations. It's just me and the ink, my favorite medium. I don't have to worry about letters, I don't have to worry about colors, I don't have to worry about anything. And in fact, this drawing doesn't need to go anywhere that I don't want it to. So I can I am free to experiment fearlessly and put marks where they don't belong and not care. Um, so. Part of this exercise for me was zero photo reference. I don't want to draw a praying mantis. I, because uh, if I was in a situation where I need to draw a praying mantis, then I do the thing that uh, all artists should do, that Chris Oatley, uh, a fantastic art teacher, uh, OatleyAcademy.com. Um, Chris Oatley teaches, it's like, okay, you're gonna draw an animal, you're gonna draw an animal doing something funny or silly or cartoony. First, you need to draw what the animal actually looks like. Look up some photo reference and uh, make studies of this animal, sketches that reach a certain level of detail that's just slightly beyond sketch, and a lot of them from lots of different angles. Understand your subject and spend a lot of time understanding your subject, because then, after you understand your subject, you will be able to manipulate it properly, and so you can get your subject to do whatever it is you want. So I could make a legit praying mantis recoiling and it would look very different than what we see here and it would be in a much different setting. It would actually be on a bit of plant life where, where praying mantises hang out, for instance. And it would have a different posture because it would be grabbing that plant and it'd have a significantly different head because it would have five eyes and it would be a pronounced triangle and its mandible would fit in the triangle shape and blah, 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 blah. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make something up in my head. I put the pincer mandibles on this face because I just felt like they went there. I gave him these giant eyes with that specific eyebrow formation just because I felt like it and it came out of my pencil and why not. That head shape is completely improvised and I enjoy that shape a great deal. I love that head and I love that face. And the rest of the body is an exploration. What do I want to draw next? For instance, for next to an actual insect, that thoracic section is wrong. It is big, bad, wrong. It's a segmented thoracic section. No, that's not how insects work. Uh, not, not in this particular vein. Um, animals more like centipedes and whatnot. They have segmented uh, body sections, but uh, not not an insect. It's so so wrong. And in my head, when I'm drawing this, it's like it's. I don't want this to be a, a real life animal. I don't want to do the study. I don't want to do those things. Not because I'm lazy, but because I'm doing something else. I'm making something up. I'm exercising my imagination, which, uh, as a cartoonist, as an artist, as a storyteller, is the most important thing that you can do. Your imagination is a muscle, and it must be exercised. Your, your brain is similarly a muscle that requires exercise, and this is a specific way that we artists can do it. And this is something that separates us from a lot of pretender artists and a lot of uh, what you might call fine artists whose real gold standard is, is this true to life? Well, sure, you know what? Being true to life is value, but uh, being true to your own specific imagination also has value. How valuable? More value than diamonds. Because diamonds, first of all, it's, it's actually there's a lot of diamonds. If you knew how many diamonds there were in the world, they'd be as expensive as dirt. Um, but that aside, your imagination is priceless because there's only one of it. There's only one you, there's only one of your imagination. A lot of us, because of movies, music, comics, whatnot, share a lot of spaces in our imagination, which is a very, very good thing, because that means that we can share a visual, visual language. That means if I make something that says to me, this is dangerous, then chances are that thing will also mean to you that this is dangerous. And that's lovely. That's the way that we can tell stories to each other effectively. However, there are variations inside of our imagination that are always going to be different. Always, always, always. And if uh, the entrepreneurial things I'm listening to are correct, and I think they are, then the thing that you want is to dis discover what is uniquely yours. Because what is uniquely yours is only yours. It's only the thing that you can do. And that's the source of finding uh, the value that you can give the world. And if, if you look at art the same way that I do, as, as something that is not only done for yourself, but done for others, done for the world, made to uh, educate, entertain, and uplift, or one, one of the three, but hopefully a combination. You know, the reason 
that you're doing this. So many people spend a lot of time learning the craft, learning the craft, learning the craft, and then some years down the road just thinking, what the hell am I doing this for? Uh, what's the real reason behind this? Am I trying to say something? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like the reason you're doing this is because it's helpful to other people. You are creating uh, uh, f something of value for other people. Um, the, the comics and whatnot that I've got were made specifically so that I could enjoy them, so that I could learn from them, and so that I could, uh, going back to an earlier episode, so that I could know that I wasn't alone. Because we read when we, we read to know that we're not alone. Um, so I didn't want to look at photo reference, didn't want to do anything. I want to exercise my imagination because it is mine. And when I am giving somebody something that I made art wise, I'm giving them the thing that is uniquely mine and that they can get from nowhere else. And I think that, um, the onus is upon all of us as artists. We are all artists. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're an artist if, if you're listening to this. You have to say to yourself, I am an artist and this is the thing that I do for other people is uh, I make uh, the art for them. It is for me as well, but it's 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 for both of us at the same time. If I could be kind of pluralist and hippie, it's like it's as much for me as it is for other people. Um, something that that I heard uh, this this old man say just before he died. He's discussing the love he has with his wife. He said to her. Uh, I have nothing, I, I'm not a special man, uh, everything about me is very average and ordinary, and I have nothing to give you but myself, however I give you that completely and freely. And the fact that he would love his, this woman so completely and unabashedly is very specifically what she wanted, and they had this just storybook romance for their entire lives together, it's, it's one of the most beautiful romance stories I've ever heard. And I look at art that way. Uh, I'm, I am not a very special person. Being an artist is not a special or unique thing. It's just that so few people do it. It's not that we have magical powers necessarily. It's just something we cultivate. And the only thing that we ultimately have to give to other people is ourselves. And the onus is upon us to give that freely and to give that completely. Uh, this is my imagination. This is what is in my head specifically, and I give this to you, and I hope that you like it. Or, um, uh, you know, to be more capitalistic, this is something I'm selling to you, and I hope that you buy it. Uh, but that's that goes back to value. This has value, and so I, I should be able to maybe eat a meal off of the back of the thing that I've made. But uh, that's a discussion for later. But the thing that I want to leave you with is this last little tidbit. We have nothing, truly nothing to give other people but ourselves as artists and, and uh, the extension of ourselves is the work that we do. And so we should give it completely and unabashedly. Make the things that only you can make because that is how you give of yourself. Not give your art away necessarily, but when you sit down to make something, make the thing that only you can make. Uh, and that's how you put a lot of value into the world. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and make art.